So, welcome back uh, after this uh, short break. Uh, the next talk uh, will be by Denis Liman. Denis Liman works at uh, Camp to Camp and uh, he's been working on Udu for, oh, I think six or seven years. Um, five, five, nine. Okay. Found it longer than that. Um, and he will be uh, presenting us uh, how to use Odoo to create a, a powerful geodata management system. Okay, so Tony, the floor is yours. Okay, so thank you, Alexandre, for, for the introduction. So first of all, I want to thank Yossi for giving us the time and to have managed to, to create this event uh, virtually. So this is pretty cool. What I'm going to do is that we created a um, video and um, I will show you the video we, pre we have done with camp to camp And meanwhile, if you have questions, I will be in the chat so I could already answer you by, uh, by typing. Okay? So, um, let me know uh, if you have comments. Please uh, share them. Uh, enjoy this video and uh, see you after the question. Um, sorry, Lima, uh, Denis, we, we will have to start again. The sound is, uh, we, we can't hear the sound of the video. Okay, that's magic. I'll see if I can get some help. So you have this, when, when you started uh, sharing screen, Denis, did you click on the button uh, to share the, the sound of the video? I think so. Um. <laughs> is, is the sound working now? No, we can't hear you. Well, it's really, really low. So it's working, but low. Okay. Mm -hmm. Magic. Um, I'm a little bit confused here. Can you speak while the, the video runs? <laughs> uh, yes, I will speak. <laughs> okay. So, so I'm speaking and you will have the sound. The video will be available also on YouTube, so you could um, see it um, with the real comments live. So this is going to be a little bit like a football match. I'm sorry for the um, technical problems. So basically here, we have built uh, the Swiss mobile project. It's, um, we call it WebDB. Swiss Mobile, just for short introduction, is, um, is uh, working mainly with the Swiss configuration, Swiss configuration, but also with departments, and which are departments, and basically for tourism associations. It's actually also one of the key partners in Switzerland for the speci speci what we call specialized partners, like Swiss hiking trails, and also Landlauf, it's all the um, tourism and um, the way to just go hiking and doing sports. It's also um, one of the key projects for the Swiss Confederation administration. 
so before starting, uh, we just introduce, let's introduce some project vocabulary. We have root, segment, and point of interest. On the map here, you can see in green all the routes. Basically, in red, there is one route, which is going from north to south of Switzerland. Um, a route is composed of segment. A segment is a maximum of one day of uh, hiking. A point of interest are basically a sightseeing places, um, a castle or a nice thing place. So basically, we are integrating all this geographical data. So this is WebDB. WebDB is composed in three main sections. We have on the left the main point of entries, uh, which are the data. And it's geographical information which is produced here in many versions. These main points of entries are just like the Swiss Alpine Club, Schweizerische Wanderwege, which are the hiking trails. These are really specific importers, and we are importing them through APIs. Below, there is another kind of entry, which are the photos. And the photos is something that is done currently by Okay, so it's something internal, the photos. It's done by the, the Schweizerische Association, so the Swiss Mobile Association. They are taking pictures and they are integrating them via the GPS coordinates that you can see into the, the, the files. The last point of entry are also shape files. It's a geographical uh, um, format. They are updated once a year, and we are entering them into a do. So these are the entry points. And in Odoo, we are importing them, and um, we, are, we have the possibility to link them together, basically. This Odoo and other Odoo here, we have basically some modules, but we have activated PostGIS in the, past, the PostgreSQL database. So here we have the possibility to have seamless features. Into it, um, we have the data which comes as a geog geographical point, and then we can adjust through the CMS uh, correct it, prepare it for publication, and publish it. Each night, with the geographical points that are validated, we export them. So this export is done really with some specific features. Basically, uh, you can have a route, and to connect to it, all pictures that are linked to the, directly linked to the route, but also the ones that are 100 meters far from the route. This exporter runs every night, so we, we have a whitelist and a blacklist system that allows us to really integrate the data and to connect it together. This is really important for us because um, we have this data that is coming from different kind of entries, and sometimes we cannot know the direct link in between them. So now we can go through Rodu. So basically here you can see a route. This one is the route um, from uh, the Wanderland, and uh, you can see a type. So here, with the demonstration, I'm in uh, admin mode, so I cannot see all the text, but as you can see, we have developed a feature to have translations. So these translations are really useful uh, for people working in different languages. We also export it to mobile applications, so we count the number of characters, which allows us to have a nice display on all kinds of applications behind. This work uh, is done also by external people, so we let them have it, what the base information they need. 
So on each route, you have facts and figures because uh, when I'm going to hike, I just want to know the length of the route, the height, and some kind of geographical information. For the people maintaining the route and all the people working on them, you have the signalization, but addresses if you need some, height profiles. And related to this, uh, it's a nice point of the project. We have photos. Basically here, you have a photo list of all the pictures that will be attached to the route. You can manage them. You can create teasers. And the more, more important one that added into the teasers. But below you see all the pictures, basically. These pictures can be set in a certain order, so you can also manage the order once they're attached to the, to the route. So the pictures are saved in many formats. So when we import a picture, there is the master pictures, which is present. And when we import it, we create the standard and the small one. So we can then uh, publish them on different kind of media. Uh, on the top, you can see that we have a specific workflow. Um, when there is something new, it comes in draft. Then we can work on them, and we have a step which is waiting validation. We need translation. There can be also an exception missing data, and at night it's validated, and we can export it. So here, basically, you see all routes that we are currently managing uh, for Switzerland. So basically, you can just see the world maps that it allows to work and select the proper place. Um, then if we go below, we have segments under the routes. So you have basically the same kind of information. And uh, yeah, basically, you can update the small parts of the segments. The um, segments are built in a quite similar way of the, the routes. And you still have also the photo. Um, but maybe let's just go through the pictures and the photos. So on each photo, when we import them, we import them also the, um, the information that are below, the ex into EXIF. And um, it's added sometimes. We can have the um, a title or an abstract to be added. But also the JPEX information, which then are added into Odoo. So it's a nice point of this project because they are doing uh, pictures on the field, and they can just upload it from uh, an FTP file. And it's integrated directly into the right place into the software. And at night, it will be added into the route and available on multiple platforms. The next point I want to show you is the good to know details. It's something also we, we added. What is a detour in the context of this project? It's just basically you have um, a pass for hiking. And um, maybe in uh, October, you, you have uh, tree cuts that are going to be done, and you cannot work on this pass anymore. So you can publish a detour about um, this pass and create a new pass about this with a start and end, a geographical start and end, and also dates. So the day tour, basically, we can see some of them up. So we can select them. And um, this is a um, technical view. So basically, someone who wants to or needs to publish a detour can upload the JPX information. And they can say if it's something dangerous, um, then they will make it linked to a segment or a route. And then here, yeah we see the detail which is currently working. So we can add intermediate coordinates, an end, and see the whole line which is making the detail. So I personally, I find it pretty cool. 
So this is something that wasn't possible before because in each department there were some small segments done and um, it wasn't published for all users. You had to go hiking and then you just saw um, something into the road that was just pointing you to, to a detour. So here is another sort of importing data we have. It's uh, what we call wintering. Basically, we are importing uh, a part of the Swiss Alpine Club data. So we have some of this data here that is present. And this is an Alpine trail, so to go hiking into the mountains. This allows really also the Swiss Alpine Club to provide us information and then to share the minimum amount to let the people go outside. So there is the same kind of amount and basically um, we, we just pass it through the APIs. So the pictures are also present directly into a specific menu and we can then select them and click, click on them just to see the metadata. And here we can see basically, so we have the standard image as I told you before, and the smaller one, we have a master one. And you can store all kind of data. Um, basically, the um, geographical settings, here you can see that the route has been added automatically. And and that these pictures are not just uploaded. We are creating the link in between this geographic band and um, the raw material. So the picture that has been imported here, you can see that there is the point, and if there is the whitelist matching, then it will be attached to the root. So actually, um, we will see the exporter. So basically, the exporter is running at night because it's requiring a lot of computation. Uh, the computation is, is pretty long, uh, at least two hours. And when we have the export, we export it to a GeoJSON format, and we have the, um, basically the roots and the segments that are attached. And when it's exported, so you have basically the information route, and then you add a whitelist or a blacklist. And in between this whitelist and blacklist, you can attach other information like the pictures, like sightseeing places, and or details. So all links and geographical links that we don't know are recreated at this moment. This comes also from the fact that we have many inputs available. So basically, this is the GeoJSON. I'm not sure it's the most interesting point of the, the project for you to see actually. But as you can see is that we have the data that is aggregated. Um, you have the um, data with translations, uh, the link with pictures, these links are um, public. And here you can see a point, a geographical point that is linked to an object. So this is going to be to be taken by external partners. There are three main external partners. And I'm going to show you one of these main partners. So, because the Swiss Mobility Project is not only an association, it's also for Swiss people a website and a mobile application. So here, if we go through the mobile, uh, the, the website, we can see all the data that has been aggregated currently. So here we zoom in into the map and we can see one of these routes with all information we aggregate, we aggregate it. We have the link to the pictures, so we access it. And this is the master data and the master pictures. 
And on the link, you can also see thumbnails that have been created during the upload of the pictures. And this is a detour, basically. So Swiss people uh, can use it and uh, can access to this, this data, and this is uh, publicly available. So this is the Swiss mobile website. But the, um, another point that I find really interesting is that the map you see below uh, is done by the Swiss department, the Swiss map department. And this Swiss Mo Switzerland Mobility Association is uh, one of the biggest clients. But here, we can see that we have a full loop is because when we do go to the Swiss Confederation website, we can see all these Swiss trials, but our data is also integrated into it. So this is the nice point of this project is that um, we import the data that is coming from many sources. One of these sources is the Swiss Confederation and we manage to, to just use it and update it, and then it comes back to the Swiss Confederation also. So, these are the main points I wanted to show you. And maybe uh, you shall re see this uh, video uh, directly. We will uh, send it into YouTube. The main points I wanted to do to say to conclude it is that this project is really challenging for us. It's really interesting, but uh, it's also something that Camp to Camp is doing from us a very very long time. We started this project with the version six that one of Open ERP, which is pretty old, and we have to know that it is not the only Odoo geographically enabled that we have. We have done some other kind of work with other clients. We have clients which are using map to show on harbor and manage the, the, um, the places for, for boats. But also we are using the possibility of interactions in between some people on the field. So it can be customers or employee that can give data and geographical data to um, um, the back end and people working in the offices. So this is just one nice um, project, but it's not the only one. So now I'm going to stop the video and maybe start asking you questions, uh, answering you, your questions. Thank you very much, Denis. And I know it was a difficult exercise for you and you were not prepared for that i'm sorry for the uh the failure uh I couldn't uh um couldn't do much about that um we have uh one yeah. question by uh frederick who says cool project well done consider to store the json data in elastic search for speed and search or is that no issue with all the interfaced application um, we s it depends on which storage um, you're talking about. The, the actual storage we are using uh, for the moment, we didn't consider Elastic, elastic Search because also this project uh, started um, 10 years ago. So the, um, the technologies weren't the same at the moment. Um, basically, we have two storage, the live storage, which is currently in PostgreSQL, which is fine for us, actually. Um, why is it also fine for us, actually, is that because not all geographical uh, points are really connected together. Uh, they are connected at the end, and then they are stored actually into CouchDB, and it's used for consultation and other system to, to go into it. So the main performance issues, we are not exper experiencing them, basically. Okay. Thank you. Any other question? Well, I, I have one, actually. Okay. Uh, it's kind of obvious, but I expect this project uses some OCA modules. Yes, absolutely. So basically, this project is built upon the, um, the OCA 
repo you can find, or the geographical uh, OCA repo you can find. The, this OCA repo allows you to just enable the geographical side of Odoo into Odoo, yeah. And um, the, the point that is currently not present uh, is all the routing system, which is really specific to this um, project. But basically, by having the geo, you can find it into GitHub. Basically, by having this module, you can have the geo technical side of Odoo included. And also, then you can include maps from different uh, kind of uh, providers. Okay. Uh, as far as I remember, the uh, geospatial add-ons uh, work only on the, on the uh, back end of Udo. Am I correct? Absolutely. Uh, yes. Um, they, they work into the, um, the back end of Udo. Um, we didn't have the need to show them into the website uh, of Udo. So it's something that I think it's doable, showing a map uh, with it. But it's something we, we didn't do for the moment. Um, you also have to know that um, this data then is, we have done it a few times, is to share it also with a mobile application. So, um, and to share the data and the letting some, someone interacting with Todo and the geographical data from his mobile. So it's something yeah, that can be done and we have already done. Another question by Frédéric is, do you use the Postgres extension of, uh, I think it's a PostGIS extension of Postgres? Mm -hmm. uh, so you said yes. And did you need to extend the ORM of Odoo to make use of that? Um, from this technical point, I cannot tell, honestly. I've been uh, I've been not developing it myself uh, as of, as far as I know, but it needs to be confirmed into the um, the code directly. Uh, is that we didn't have to update the ORM for for that? Okay. Uh, and a remark suggestion by Carl Mason who says a uh, nice presentation. Could f uh, weather forecast? added to the routing segments so you see the route and the weather before starting i think all is doable basically here we we have routing segments the the only we can attach all information we have uh, and we and we want so basically here we are already aggregating multiple sources and um, the weather forecast could be something that could be attached absolutely but maybe it's something which belongs more to the application than to the management system we have in Odoo. Absolutely, this is not the, um, the things here. It's um, basically the backend and there are CMS features and um, it's not our responsibility actually. It's the responsibility of uh, the external partners which are using the data we aggregated. But if we need, um, we could think about something where we need to to add APIs information and links information to a specific um, to a specific me meteor station, and um, this kind of inf information could be aggregated, basically. Okay. Uh, one uh, additional note uh, for the first question by uh, Frédéric: uh, there is there are some uh, ORM extensions in the Base Geo Engine module. Okay, so uh, check the base geo engine module in the OCA geospatial um, uh, repository, and you'll see there's uh, a file called geooperators.py, which add the uh, matching operators for uh, the postgis operators. Yeah, I uh, must confess I didn't. I worked less on the the technical details of the implementation <laughs> myself. Um, on this topic, um, well, we have nice colleagues, and I want to promote also um, Yannick Vosche and Akin Juera, which are currently uh, contributing to the sprints also, which have been working a lot on this project. So. The um, technical side of um, the, the geospatial add-on, maybe it's uh, better to get in touch with them, which um, these two people have been doing quite a, a, a good job. Yay, of course. 
We still have time for one last question, I think. Yes, absolutely. No, no more questions. So, so yeah, so thank you, Alexandre, for, for the time. Thank you for your questions and your time. I'm sorry for, for the technical problems. Um, we are going to, to push the video. I have been commenting li like a football match, all right? And um, it, shall, it, it shall be shared and you will have a better sound. Yeah, we'll, we'll try when we uh, posted it, the, uh, the talks, to use the correct version of the video and meld it with the, uh, with the answers. Uh, Frédéric sells, says we should sell this to Austria. Uh, um, not sure. Let's discuss that in the uh, in the track on Discord if you're okay with this, and yes. uh, if you have specific ideas for that, uh, Frédéric. Uh, 